Hey everybody, what's up? Circus here coming to this week's Rogue Deck Roundup. Joining me this week, as always, is Kamel. How you doing, buddy? What's up, man? I'm doing great. Good. So if you guys don't know what we do here, it's basically the power rankings, but for Rogue Decks. So we track decks how, uh, during the week and see how they perform, and then we assign them points based on how they finish. All right. So if they get a, a first place finish, they get six points. If they get a second place finish, they get four points. A top four is two points, and a top eight is a single point. Make sure to check out that DLE shirt right there is looking good, looking good. All right. So the tournaments we tracked, and I'm going to yell at you tournament organizers out there. Get off your bus. Get some tournaments going. But we got the Battle Phase series, uh, the Metal Weekly, and the Pharaoh's Cash Tournament. So we'd like to see some more tournaments next week that use the, the Realms of Swiss into a top 32 with a, a single deck and a six-card side. So make sure to get those tournaments popping, you guys. All right. That being said... Kamel, what do you think the top rogue deck of the week is? One of two. <laughs> One of two. <laughs> scoring five points. Who's it going to be? Thunder Ooh. Dragons. Wow, Thunder Dragons just squeezing out the win yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this week. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Deck. Yeah, let's take a look at it here. Um, let, Thunder Dragons is a deck that disappeared. No one was even playing it. You know, it got nerfed for some odd reason. Nobody knows why. It gets hit. It disappears, and now it's back, baby. What's happening? It's back, and honestly, this is the efforts of one player, Ruganary, doing extremely well in Battle Phase Friday, uh, getting all the way to second place, losing to Black Wings in the finals. And just based on the list we have on screen, you can already tell it's different. Enemy controller, double enemy controller, pops off in this deck so hard. And there was a very different strategy from what we used to see Thunder Dragons use. You can see there's only a two tuners here one of each the play spreader and the glow bulb there used to be more because you used to have a lot more mill potential mm -hmm. don't have that anymore so a lot of this deck revolved around getting out a powerful thunder dragon like the roar or the dragon duo and boosting it up with the matrix uh, kind of sneaking it into the hand with your thunder dragon effects and then he has mobius the frost monarch at the top there if you can see it for back row control when it is tribute summoned it destroys two spell or trap cards yeah and yeah just put them in here for good measure and this is a pretty tight list 21 cards only in the main deck yeah so i bet gian stranger out there is just celebrating right now because this is this is his deck baby mm -hmm. all right now coming in second place well the only other place really this week is evil eye with uh four points uh top four in the meta weekly so you can't you can't say that sucks and then top four in the uh, battle phase money which is really our big tournament so two big tournaments of the week it got top four yeah um last week i didn't have too much to say about this deck because i didn't really know the intricacies of it but i, I did watch some footage of it this week and there's a pretty sick combo with see you later which uh, this player is playing that lets you return one of your Evil Eyes, usually the Basilius to the hand, and then lets you activate an effect to discard it and a Gorgoneo, and then you search an Evil Eye card from your deck to your hand. Usually for your turn one play, you want to search Evil Eye Defeat so that you can set up an interrupt for your opponent bouncing a card back to their hand. And because you will add it back to your hand with other cards, you will be able to use Treacherous Trap Hole. Which is nice, yeah, that's a great so, card to have. You don't see it a lot because everybody's playing so many traps that it's almost uh, crazy to play Treacherous Trap Hole, but when you got something like this where you can pull your other traps out of the grave, it's perfect. Yeah, pretty nice, pretty nice. So I'm looking at this deck to graduate next. It's going to take a couple weeks, but Evil Eye players, get in the lab, figure it out. They got to get some it. tournament victories first, though. That's their whole problem. I mean, they're, they're yeah. on rogue decks a lot, but they need to get some wins. The biggest yeah, thing holding do. them back is they really only have two monsters and neither of them are a boss monster. <laughs> yeah, either the deck needs more support or there has to be some intricate strategy that uses more monsters than just the Basilius and the Medusa. Yeah, there, you got to comb through the card catalog and there's going to be like that one card that has some kind of wording that allows it to work with these cards or something, right? That, yeah. that one little tech card that they need to get in there. All right, we, we do have some honorable mentions this week. Invo oh. Invoked Roids got a top eight in BBEU. Invoked Roids. Yeah. Oh, God. It is what it is, man. I mean, it, it's rearing its ugly head. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's basically uh, just a dirty little deck, right? I mean, it's kind of stall, kind of burn. I don't even know what to say. 
but it did get a top eight in BPEU. Uh, and then speaking of dirty, 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 uh, oh, stall. Man. I mean, just stall. yeah, dumpster fire here. Yeah. Oh my gosh! It's invoke stall on top of it, so yeah, that, I don't even know what you're doing with that invoke stall. You're getting a top eight in anti phase, is what you're doing. <laughs> I mean, look what it's playing, though. I mean, it's playing Necro Valley for the control. Uh, it's got, was it the Fortress Warrior? That's just dirty. Yeah, and it's on Swords <laughs> Woman. Yeah, it's just totally degenerate. But top eight in a, in a major tournament. I mean, come on. I mean, obviously yeah, it's must, working. He must have been hitting those Purgatrios. He must have been hitting those Lava Golem Alistair Purgatrios. It got played nine times in the past week. Top 32 three what? times. It, it got what? a top eight in anti phase, so it's happening, man. It's happening. Stall can do it too, I guess. <laughs> and then the last honorable mention I want to give is uh, to the most recent addition to the Rogue Deck family, and that is Dark Magician. <laughs> My gosh, we just recorded power rankings, and I didn't even notice that Dark Magician <laughs> was absent. From the list. Oh yes. my gosh. Dark Magician with a single point over the past week. Isn't that crazy? Oh it, it only got played 46 times. It made right. the top 32 11 times into the top 8 once. Now that's bad. That's worse than Christrons. 26 right. people played Christrons, man. That's bad. That yeah. is bad for Dark 46 Magician. people put their helmet on this week, and only one of them was able to make it into the top 8. My gosh, that is trash. Welcome to Rogue Dex, Mr. Magician. How are you? <laughs> oh man, welcome to Rogue Dex, Dark Magician. They've fallen from the meta grace. Yeah, is it possible for a deck like Dark Magician to fall into Rogue Dex? Because some of these things, I would say, almost qualify every week, but then it's kind of like, well, it is Blue Eyes. Can Blue Eyes become a Rogue Deck? Oh, look, if we if we want to set the standard and do that. We could do it. So if you want to ask the chat, ask them what they uh, ask the, the comments, right. see what they think about it. Should we make Dark Magicians a rogue deck? <laughs> I a, think a we should have like a standard rogue. like four weeks in a row of like five or less points or something like that. Yeah, or, if, yeah. you, if, you, if you don't get it together, you're going to <laughs> you're rogue. You're getting deck. demoted. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, Dark okay. Magician, welcome to the club, buddy. Yeah, but that's very that's actually an interesting uh, subject. So in the comments, let us know how you how right. you like to handle decks under tier list decks underperforming. Uh, do you want to see them on rogue decks? One point for Dark Magician. That's absurd. Yeah, for, I, uh, Dark Magician uh, did just as well as Invoked Roids and Stall this week, this past week. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's bad. Yeah. Oof. But honestly, that's all we have this week. People went crazy on the standard decks. That's all they really played. That's all I shouldn't say that's all they played. There was a lot of what like crazier rogue decks out there, but nothing was making top uh top eight. The yeah. only thing that was making top eights were the stand the, the standbys, all the stuff we talked about in the power rankings. So I'm challenging you guys, get out there. Practice your deck, get into the top eight so we can have you on rogue decks next week. That's what we need. All right, I hope you guys like it. Let us know what you think a rogue deck is down below. How do we qualify it? Yeah. I'd love to hear what you have to say. So if you like it, make sure to follow us on uh, Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. Make sure to like, like, comment, and subscribe, all that good stuff. Get in the Discord because that's where we announce all our tournaments, and it's always a good time in there. We can... You can make rogue decks too. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So... Peace out, guys. It was great seeing you. Great having you. Yep. See you next week. I'm Circus, and that's Kamel. Peace out.